Yo guys, it's AP414 here and welcome back to a video on my channel that isn't to do with FIFA 17. Now my whole channel is initially revolved around just football itself, the beautiful game, getting involved with it, but I've channeled it into FIFA, it's how I like it, I love to get FIFA involved with my channel. But I also want to open up and basically talk to you guys about football. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm recording this on Tuesday. It is 3.45 and this is going to be going up on Wednesday around like 6 o'clock or something like that. Like 5.30, who knows, something like that. But I'm going to be talking to you guys today about football and how I think it's really developing as a sport. And how before it's been criticised for too many like good teams and certain needs for storming it. I'm kind of going to be proving that wrong today and how the 2016-17 season has produced a lot of upsets which I think have really made football a better game and I'm basically going to be going through that with you guys today and also talking a little bit about football, my clubs, how they're doing at the moment, a few fixtures coming up, let's get into it. So bearing in mind this video is indeed going to be recorded before any Cavite One Cup fixtures have indeed been playing so who knows, maybe a few more upsets are going to be coming in through them tonight or indeed um, before like on Tuesday. I don't even know, I mean, I hope Chelsea get past West Ham, by the time this video goes up or by the time you're watching this, they either will or wouldn't have, I mean, if you get on this video early then you won't know yet, like me, but Barcelona tonight, as I'm recording this video on a Tuesday, are going to be playing Espanyol in the Catalonia um, Super Cup, and I hope Barcelona don't get a win in that, so Chelsea and Barcelona are my two favourite teams, at the moment Barcelona are having a really weird um, start to the league, I'm going to have the tables up here in the background to have a look at. Barcelona have played nine in La Liga, they've won six, they've drawn one, and they've lost two, but we're currently sitting third, and we're literally, what, two points behind um, bloody well Real Madrid, who are actually first. Sevilla are second on 20 points, and that kind of just reiterates how tight it is at the top of the league. If Barcelona win one game and Real lose it, we completely leapfrog them, and the same goes for Atletico Madrid. If they win and Real lose, they're in fifth. They're in fifth spot right now. If they win... And, then, and Real Madrid lose their game, then they'll go top on goal difference, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And basically, that's just how sick La Liga is going to be becoming these days. But Barcelona are doing average this season. I think Messi's had a really good year so far. So if he can continue playing like this, I think we're going to do great things in the future. I'm still confident we will go for the La Liga win, but I'm not as confident as I was at the start of the season. Now, in terms of Chelsea, if we go to the Premier League table, we are indeed currently sitting fourth. But with fourth... One point behind the league leaders. I mean, a draw puts us like it puts us up there. It puts us like top. A draw puts us top of the top of the league, lads. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous how tight it is at the moment. Man City, Arsenal, and Liverpool are all top on twenty points. So Liverpool is third and on the same amount of points as Man City, who are in first. So goal difference is becoming a big factor this year. So. I mean, whoever scores the most goals in games, it's going to be crucial. If you're like 2-0, you don't just want to sit on it, perhaps. You want to go and get the third goal, because goal difference looks like it's going to be playing its part. Um, I'm really happy with our Chelsea developing as I said. I think the 3-4-3 formation that Conte is now implying into the Chelsea team is working fantastically. And I'm really happy with how he's doing at the season. I knew it would take time for him to come in, but he's really, really coming into it. We've nearly played out all 10 games in the Premier League this season. And, well, we're already doing fantastically, I think. I'm really impressed with what Conte's done so far. But... That is how I'm, I'm pretty happy with Chelsea and Barcelona so far this year. I'm content, I'd like to say. Um, wouldn't, I was really surprised to see how tight it is, how hard every game is. Um, I mean, Barcelona losing to Alaves. I mean, who would predict that at the start of the year? I'm pretty sure no one would have. But basically, I'm loving how it tight it is this year. I'm loving how excellently competitive football is becoming. And basically, I'm really happy with how it's going. So yeah, now let's go on to talking about a few other teams, but Chelsea and Barcelona. So I'm going to be starting off talking about the Premier League table. Now, as you can see, we have got Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal all top on 20 points and it is becoming ridiculously tight. It is ridiculously tight. Now, I'm, now I believe I've previously told you about this, but I'm going to be looking through all five leagues in Europe today, the top five that is, and basically show you guys just how tight it is. Now, Manchester United are down in seventh, Everton are in sixth, Tottenham are, Tottenham are fifth, and they are one point behind Manchester City. That is how tight football's becoming these days. I absolutely love it. Unfortunately, Sunderland are absolutely horribly down there um, in bottom place. I mean, with two points out of nine games, it's absolutely horrific. Swansea have actually dropped down there, which makes me really disappointed that Chelsea didn't pick up all three points when we went to the Liberty. That was really disappointing looking back how poor they're doing now. Leicester, currently Premier League leaders, are in 12. They seem to be picking up wins against the easy teams, which is what they wouldn't have been doing previous seasons so they can be proud of themselves but considering they won the league last year they'll also be disappointed. Now in the league if we go and have a look at the bottom of the table Granada are quite similar to 
Sunderland. They've also got three points out of nine games, which is absolutely horrific. Also, Sevilla and Sporting are in there too in the relegation zone. Looking up at any upsets, um, upsets even, Real Sociedad have been doing too well recently. They're actually in seventh this year. Bill Bauer and Adarese carrying them there in the sixth. Um, well, it's been Las Palmas. That's the big upset. With Kevin Prince Bolting and a few other quality players like Vincent and Joraljo. Um, they're doing fantastically. So they're in 12. Eibar are up there. They always seem to do fantastically. Alaves would be Barca in 13. They probably expect expected themselves to be around the drop zone at this time in the Liga. So a good few upsets in there. And as we look at the top of the table, Atletico Madrid, I talked about, about this earlier. They're in fifth now. A win and puts them top if Real Madrid lose their next game. So that is just absolutely sick. It basically shows you guys how tight some of these leagues are right now. And basically, a few upsets in there. Valencia are actually 15th. There we have it. They're absolutely terrible. I don't like how rough they are either. I think they're a very violent team. Um, but they're down in 15th. They lost Alcacer. They've lost Andre Gomes. They're struggling. Now, if we move on to the Bundesliga, the story is very similar. They've actually only played eight games, but still, Bayern Munich, they've won six and they've drawn two. How often have we seen Bayern Munich absolutely storm the Bundesliga? They're not doing this year. RB Leipzig are eight, have got 18 points and they're second. Hertha BSC, they are they are third. Hoffenheim are six, have got 16 points. They're fourth. Um, FC Cologne, they're bloody well fifth. And Dortmund are sixth. Where are, where are Wolfsburg are 16th? What is that all about? Schalke are 14th, Bayer Leverkusen are 11th, Modern Gladbach are 10th. These are Champions League side points that are dropping in the leagues and it's making it more interesting. Are RB Leipzig going to produce one of the biggest shocks in football and absolutely storm the Bundesliga? It would be absolutely fantastic. Can they really catch up with Bayern Munich? They haven't lost a game. They have not lost a game, neither in Hoffenheim. It's, just, it's incredible to see in football. I'm really happy that I've finally developed. Unfortunately, in the Bundesliga, there are a few of the um, major deficiencies down there. Ingolstadt and Hamburg at SV have both got two points from eight games. So that's kind of the sad story of the Bundesliga. Dortmund aren't doing too well. Too well. They're, they're in sick. They would have expected to be second or third. Schalke are doing terribly. Wolfsburg are. Bayer Leverkusen, Monchen Gladbach. These are all teams we expect to be in the top five of the Bundesliga. But unfortunately, Hertha, Hoffenheim, Cologne, Leipzig, they've all taken the seat by storm. And literally Leipzig are two points behind Bayern Munich. A win for them and a loss for Bayern puts them top of the Bundesliga. Imagine that. Now if we move on to the Serie A or the Calcio A or whatever you want to call it. Juventus are currently sitting top of the league. But again, what is happening to football? Juventus, out of a possible 27 points, have only got 21 points. Now usually at this stage in the league they would be absolutely flying. But they've recently lost to AZ Milan. And basically they've only won seven out of their nine games. And they've lost two of them. Those losses came against the two Milan teams. Who, let's just talk about Inter Milan. They're in 14th. What are they on about? I'm not sure about that. what's happening there. AC Milan, however, are two points behind Juventus, actually, in third place. Um, Roma in second, two points behind them on goal difference. Oh, my God. It's, it's fantastic, really. Napoli in fourth. Kind of worried we'd expect them to do. I think they'd be quite happy with that, considering they lost Higuain. But, yes, Juve are top. But, yes, they are also getting chased. I mean, we saw Milan have an absolute sick revival the other day. I mean, the win against Juve was absolutely sensational. The young lock of Telly with an absolute screamer for them, but, I mean, it's so tight up there. Crotone at the bottom of the table, look like they're going down there. Five points behind the team above them, so... Wow, that's really shocking. Look at that. Goals against 20. Minus 13 goal difference. So, yeah, they've only drawn one game out of the nine that they've played. They've lost eight of them. They're in big, big trouble. But, I mean, Juve are struggling up there. Rome are chasing them. Milan are chasing them. Football is getting very tight up. And it's becoming more enjoyable for neutrals, let's be honest. And now for the final table, and probably the one that will shock you guys the most, the Lee Up. Now you guys are probably expecting, oh, PSC, they played 10 games, 30 points, 20 points. What's that all about? Like, what is that? 20 points for PSG. They've won six of their 10 games, they've drawn two of them, and they've lost two of them. I mean, they're struggling. Nice are top. Nice are top by six points on PSG. PSG are currently sitting in third, Monaco in second, and Nice are in first. Now, yes, they've Balotelli, but he's not really the one doing the bits for them. They've got Plea up top and a player, I'm not sure how you pronounce it in French. He's doing quality for them, he's netting goals, he's getting assists, he's doing pretty much everything for them. Uh, let's have a look if there's any real shots in them. Montpellier, they won the league up five years ago, they're dropping down. Um, Marseille and Lyon, wow, they're doing poorly. Lyon have still got Lacazette as well, I expect them to be doing well. Lyon are in 10th, Marseille are in 11th, that's not good for them. Yes, Marseille have lost back to but you thought they would have been able to revive from that, apparently not. Toulouse in fourth, but I mean, the main thing about this is Nice. They haven't lost a game yet for crying out loud. 
and PSG are losing them left, right, and centre. PSG are slipping away from the lead. They've lost Latan, and it's costing them. And yes, Cavani's got nine goals in nine games, but it's clearly not enough for them. It really isn't, because Nice are taking this league by storm. And out of all the top competitive leagues in Europe, they are doing the best, getting a grand total of 26 points out of a possible 30. They've only dropped four points in the league. They mean business. The leagues are getting tighter. They're getting more competitive. I basically thought it was a fantastic week for me, guys, for me, just to talk to you guys about football and how fantastic it's been these days. And yeah, that's basically going to wrap up the video. If you have enjoyed, then drop a like on it. If you want to see me do more stuff like this, kind of reviewing how the tables are going, what's going big in football, maybe you want to just get me to talk about a few certain topics and how I feel on them, like the Ballon d'Or shortlist, something like that. Let me know in the comment section down below. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. But for now, I've been AP414, and here, yeah, peace out.